In the early morning hours of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene, along with some of the other women disciples, went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. For Mary and the disciples, stuck in the fog of confusion and tender grief, the loss of their friend's dead body was like salt in the wound of their pain. Truly, was there any hope in the midst of all the chaotic madness? I resonate with Mary and her anguish and the deep yearning for light in the darkness. When I go back and reflect again on that first Holy Week, leading up to the dawn of Easter, in spite of the irrational chaos surrounding him, we begin to see that literally up until his final breath, Jesus was thoughtfully piercing holes in the fabric of the tumult. Jesus offered words of hope and reminded them of the great commandment. He healed the blind and lame in the temple courtyard. He broke bread with his friends and washed their feet. He rested each night on the Mount of Olives with the other pilgrims. He prayed for his enemies, even as he hung on the cross. With each action, he demonstrated the character and mission of love, letting go for the sake of others. I recently came across a collection of texts by a relatively new and young writer named R.M. Drake, who poetically reflected on the nature of chaos. With eyes plucked, so hate she saw not. She just wanted to be happy. Her heart squeezed like a sponge and flushed memories adrift through heaps of wind. So she blew away, across the flow, and forgot why the tears decorated her smile. Destroyed by the friction, the painful thoughts would ignite. And in the chaotic rubble, she still remembered who she was. In the midst of chaos and death, Jesus revealed a deeper truth, trusting in the truth of God's steadfast, everlasting mercy and love, even in the chaos of Holy Week and the incredible suffering of Good Friday. Jesus never forgot who he was and whose he was. Indeed, Jesus revealed by his own actions and words that God's generosity, grace, and mercy will always pierce the madness and boldly proclaim that resurrection is real. The stories of Holy Week and Easter invite us to go deep in our relationship with God and to go deep in our relationships with one another. To clearly understand that as a community of faith, we don't journey to the cross or the empty tomb alone. We always walk together. To deeply know that God's love for each of us is what sustains us through any suffering. To firmly believe that out of chaos comes creativity and new life. The cross and grave always lead to resurrection. Always to rejoice and proclaim our hope-filled song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Today, even as we continue to figure things out about the virus and what it means to be church, here are some of the things I have learned this year. Salvation is not defined or granted through our sacred buildings. Yes, absolutely, our churches are holy places that offer sanctuary and peace, and we certainly encounter God there. However, God is not confined to our buildings, and Jesus always calls us to his mission out in the world. The ancient Greek word for church is ecclesia, which loosely translated is gathering or assembly of people. As followers of Jesus, we understand our gathering to be the body of Christ, 
all of which was never limited to a physical structure. This past year has been a time of deep reflection of the way we sometimes idolize our buildings at the expense of our relationships with God, with Jesus, with each other, with ourselves, and with the stranger. Our churches are holy places and we are invited to be stewards of them, but they are fundamentally assets for our mission to spread the good news of love, healing, peace, and justice. The pandemic has revealed the primacy of relationships with one another and with God. I have discovered that it is those relationships that are healthy, faithful, mutual, and deep are what have sustained me during this challenging time. I believe we as a diocese are invited to explore new ways of developing and nurturing our relationships beyond just the one to two hours we share together on Sundays. Setting aside the necessary time and attention to nourish our relationships is vital to our common ministries and the mission of Jesus. I am also discovering that in addition to the importance of promoting relationships is the corresponding work of cultivating healthy communication. While we have been, by and large, cut off from one another's physical presence, I realize the imperative that we all need to be equipped to lovingly hold tough conversations on things that matter with each other and with our neighbors. We live in a world that is addicted to sound bites and in communities that are infected with division. We hurl incendiary language and bitterly shame people we don't even know. Clearly, we are losing the ability to simply talk with one another and listen with respect to each other's stories and see Christ in one another. We need to reclaim the holy practices of extending hospitality to the stranger and prayerfully open up our hearts to the movement of the Holy Spirit to care for all of God's children. My friends, even in the midst of chaos, we are called to remember who we are and whose we are. Despite the chaos, God's light will always pierce the darkest night. Despite the chaos, God's Spirit will always transform us into a new way of being. Despite the chaos, God's mercy will always call to seek and serve our neighbor. Despite the chaos, God's love will always bring new life. May this Easter season be filled with God's grace, hope, and love.